This morning, I didn't even know if Nolan was alive. I, I, I didn't even know if I wanted him to be alive. Now he's left another planet in ruins and his, his new kid is sitting in my kitchen. The Viltrumites took him, Mom. Your dad didn't have a choice. Oh, like hell he didn't. He didn't have to go to that planet. He certainly didn't have to find a new partner and have a new baby. He's never on the hook for the lives he destroys. Just leaves it for everyone else to clean up. Again and again. Hey, panelists. Welcome back to the show. I'm Art. And I'm Jamie. And this episode we are covering, and yes, we are back again. Yay! Uh, yay! Uh, but season uh, season two of Invincible, the second half, is back, and we are covering that here on this episode of Panels to Pixels podcast. Uh, we're covering episode five, entitled "This Must Come as a Shock." So uh, it's been a long time since we had it. It's been months since we got the last Invincible episode. Yeah. It actually dropped earlier than I thought it was going to. I thought they were going to push it till the summer, so I'm kind of excited. I'm surprised too when when you mentioned it in Messenger to me, like, "Hey, it's back! We can record! <laughs> yes, this is awesome!" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's cool." So get to I watch it, yay! Get to watch it, yay! <laughs> and then we figure out if another season's available to us uh, come again, which I'm sure they will. They haven't announced it yet, but I'm pretty sure most definitely they took a while with this. I. I, and we said this the last time with the first half that I think it had to do with the pandemic, but we found it very odd for the fact that a lot of animated shows were able to still record during the pandemic at that point. Yeah. And uh, it shouldn't have halted it, especially during the strikes that were going on with the uh, the SAG-AFTRA and the uh, WGA. And uh, it it didn't really affect anything animated, but I'm pretty sure everybody else was trying to do something in the, in the meantime, because you have to factor in the voice actors had other obligations too. even. Yeah. They've got a if, pretty stacked voice acting cast in the show. Yeah. And then somebody comes back as a different voice in it, which I really did like uh, within this episode too. So they play double. And then uh, I, I'm not sure if we mentioned him the last time, but Cliff Curtis came back as Paul. I think he was on uh, on the first half as well. So if you all don't remember Cliff Curtis, but he was in Fear of the Walking Dead and he was also in Avatar The Way of the Water. So uh, he's a uh, watched that. <laughs> he's a uh, he's a New Zealand actor, so he's usually he usually has a heavy accent, but. Not as no, nah, it's not as heavy as Taika Waititi, but but he he's a, a brilliant actor, I think. But uh, we also get Mars uh, Ross uh, Mars Ross Marquand as uh, <laughs> omnipotent, not just as uh, immortal in this episode. And of course, we got the typical cast as we always do. Since the last time we recorded, I think uh, in news we got Stephen Yun. He won something. He did. He won an Emmy. Yes. So, and congratulations to him. It's great. I can't wait to see when he gets an Oscar because I wouldn't put it past that the fact that he just finally he got an Emmy. He's now, a good he, actor. He's a really good actor. He's I love grown. seeing him do well. Yeah, he he's grown since The Walking Dead, uh, especially with his first appearance, which would have been the Big Bang Theory, if anybody remembers that. Oh yeah, that's right. I keep forgetting <laughs> that. <laughs> so, but. On to this episode, we kind of digress from the very beginning, but not us. Oh, not us. <laughs> uh, the synopsis for this uh, episode, Jamie. The synopsis is the Grayson household is upended when Mark returns to Earth with surprising new responsibilities. Just put it mildly. The Guardians <laughs> of the Globe face dangers both at home and away. Short and sweet. Yeah, accurate. Accurate. Uh, definitely with the Guardians of the Globe facing dangers both at home and away. Uh, the home one was a uh, shocker to me, but uh, especially what we lose. But we'll get into that later as we yeah. get into our discussion points uh, or just discussion of uh, favorite moments or odd moments within the the episode. But uh, your initial thoughts, Jamie, on the episode overall, what did you like? Is something that you didn't like? 
I really I love this show. I thought it was a good episode. I'm not gonna say it was the best episode ever, but I thought it was a really solid episode. Yeah. Um, and I really liked how it started. It was very in line. It was very similar to the season opener, season two opener, where we're Mark is recovering from being knocked the f out. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> but instead of it being doom and gloom and well, also seeing an alternate reality, but instead of it feeling like sad, like it it immediately became hopeful, which was nice. Yeah, those moments of hope within the episode I saw completely and a little bit of levity of yeah. especially when um <laughs> what what I forget the uh, what the Martian's name and it is shapeshifter or shape master, I forgot. But uh he uh how he, he it's like and Cecil's like, Yeah, we know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah, we all know. <laughs> but stuff like that. And then uh, like I said, there was some sad. There was a couple of sad moments, and then obviously moments of um, growth more with uh, Mark, especially when he comes back to Earth from uh, from the planet of Thraxen. And his stepmom there gave—I forget her name—gave um, him the good advice. You know, he Andressa. was like, "If yeah. if we weren't here." You know, if I wasn't here, you guys would, you know, this wouldn't have happened to you. She's like, yeah, but if your dad wasn't here, I wouldn't have my son. And if it, and if you weren't here, then we'd all be dead. Like, you know, stop being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he needed that. He needed somebody to do that to him, which nobody was there to do the last time. Well, Debbie wouldn't be the one. Debbie would try to have him stop whatever he was doing. Yeah. Cecil would try to have him stop as well. Like he's trying to control him. And his friends are teenagers. But they're supportive. They're, no, they're supportive, but they're not. I think you need to be a little older to say what she said. I think you need to have a little more view of the world to be able to impart Weathered that kind and of mature yeah. is what you're looking for, I think. And yeah, I would say that too. They, they're, But the fact is, is his friends are definitely supportive in his efforts and know him like William, Amber, oh, yeah. and, uh, and Eve. And Eve, definitely Eve. But the fact is, with Eve coming back, that was a good thing too. Especially the way Rex gets her back, and it's so funny. <laughs> oh yeah, no, his. I mean, his friends are great. He's got a really great support system. They just nobody told him like basically shut up. You did. You saved people. It's yeah. good that you were there, and it's not your fault. So knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with me, I I really did enjoy the episode. I agree with you, Jamie, completely. Of out how it started very similar to the opening sequence that we got in the beginning of the season and it it's like he, they both wake up it's like ah i'm unconscious <laughs> i'm like i'll screw it up mark's always getting beat up and bloodied it seems yeah thank god he's a vulture mate otherwise he would have been dead a long time ago yeah <laughs> What what was I I like it when the the Thraxen stated hey, it's like he's got a hole in him what's leaking out <laughs> <laughs> I think it's what's this red liquid I think it's his blood <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly like they didn't know what it was going on but the fact is uh, yeah to just to move in what we liked about the episode because we've kind of infiltrated that and just kind of yeah. threw that in and overall but we're moving right into it but yeah I I love that whole conversation that andressa had with mark and i thought it was really good dialogue it was yeah. one of the few times that we really get that other than thaddeus at the very end that we God. get with uh alan the alien are, and are the we, fact that we get alan the alien because uh, that one episode is he even says it at the end he goes my eye was looking at me <laughs> yeah i love alan i'm glad he's there I, I like him i like okay so we'll just talk about the ending now like, go ahead it's fine we could go on <laughs> <in> sequence <laughs> yeah so um alan i love alan i love super buff alan he's adorable yeah <laughs> but you know who thaddeus voice is right yeah we we talked about it before yeah. it's peter cullen i love hearing his voice oh yeah he, he's a great voice actor we just don't we not only know him as optimus prime but now as Thaddeus and he's doing more and more work and he's doing the con circuit as we all know so yeah you can meet I missed Peter Cullen I missed him last year I was a little bummed about that yeah it's he's he's definitely I'm, I'm told he's definitely very approachable very nice to talk to very much like um 
like the I I, remember, I met the voice actor of Lion O. Oh, that's cool. From Thundercats. Yeah. And, and he signed my uh, Thundercats sword. Ooh, that's I got awesome. a real metal one that they had. And I think, yeah, I bought it at Terrificon. Rob was right next to me. And Rob's like, you're really going to buy it? I was like, and the guy yeah. was like, yeah, this is our last one. <laughs> yep. So it, you'll kick yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. I, I did it on a whim and I was like, you know what? And when I'm, uh, he goes, well, what are you going to do now? I said, I'm going to get that dude to freaking sign it. <laughs> 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 but I'm pretty sure op- uh, Optimus Prime, uh, Peter Cullen gets a lot of stuff from Transformers and their legacy voice actors that we all know. So it's amazing that we uh, uh, con goers like Jamie and myself get to go and meet these people. And it's just to, to praise them. Yeah. Uh, we get a little jealous of our friend Ben Beck, who does uh, Wilhelm, because he gets to moderate some of these panels. And he, I think he did Peter Cullen at one point. He did, and he released it. So if you're interested in a Peter Cullen panel, um, check the Wilhelm pal- podcast. It was I listened to it. It was really well done. It was really good. I didn't get to see it live, unfortunately, but um, yeah. I think you had to buy a special ticket for it, actually. Really? I don't I, Yeah, there was that. like a Peter Cullen experience. Huh, interesting. Uh, um, and I think he was able to get the YouTube for it, like the video. There's certain cons listeners that if you go to, they it's some weird thing that they don't allow the pa- moderator of the panel to take the video, even though they've done it. But there are certain cons that will put it on YouTube anyway. Yeah. But, you know, it's like at least. And you can usually find a fan who recorded it on their phone, too. <laughs> well, they did that with me, with Tony Moore. When I interview, when I moderated Tony Moore, actually, it was just me and Tony Moore literally having a conversation at the last <laughs> The Walking Dead, uh, you know, convention that we did, Walker Stalkers. So uh, <laughs> it was, uh, and I found it funny. The two people that were in front of me were our two friends, Brima and Jason. <laughs> and, and at about maybe 40 people behind them just casually watching, and then one cool fan that was doing video of it, of me and him. Which is pretty cool. It's just weird when you have chanting and people rioting about their photo ops to the left. Oh. <laughs> but that's that was then and this is now. Yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, th- it's cool to go out there and see these voice actors as they are awesome that we do get Peter Cullen as Thaddeus. He did a great job. The fact that he drops the, the bomb on us. And telling Alan of who he is, he he literally says, yeah, uh, I pulled your life support so that way your body could heal itself. And I was hoping it would get better. And he did. He came back stronger. He goes, look at these and muscles. He, at first, he felt bad breaking the, yeah. the tank. Typical like, it so Alan. Cute. It was it's so typical cute. Typical Alan. And I just love that about the character. He's like so he's so innocent, and naive in certain things. Uh, yeah, he's about, adorable. About the universe and the world and people. And he made a great friend in Mark. But now we find out Thaddeus tells him that he he is a Viltramite. He's and the first one to have rebelled. We didn't think anybody did that. Nope, we didn't think oh, wait, that. Wasn't there? I'm trying to remember now. I didn't. I wanted to do a season rewatch and I didn't. The history of uh, the episode. I, I feel think... like there I feel like there was like some kind of comment made when the Viltramites were fighting. Yes. And now we know. I feel like there was a comment. I just don't remember they what it mentioned, was. They mentioned something happened and then there was an uprising, but I, yeah. I, I, they didn't mention of anybody getting away from it. So, and then obviously with Nathan being the way he is, technically he did retaliate against the uh, Viltramites himself, but unfortunately he attacked his own people, attacked the, the planet that he was sworn to protect and take over and then realized that he loved his son but wanted more and then we we saw that challenge last season the first season of where he had to struggle with that yeah. and uh left mark for pretty much dead but in this season we found uh some sort of resolution but debbie had put it perfectly it's like yeah he destroyed another planet and yep. had another kid and it's just like it's like and Debbie's her, still stuck cleaning up his mess. Yeah, and she says it flat out. She's yeah, stuck cleaning up his mess. She didn't want to have the uh, Mark's brother there, but she kind of realized this is what Mark wants because yeah, she's it, taking it for her son. 
yeah, she's going to deal with it as is. But the funniest is about how Cecil <laughs> has been listening. And he goes, it's not like that. We didn't take any video. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been disgusting. Uh, but, it was funny when he came on. She's like, well, just like a normal baby. He doesn't like anything. <laughs> that, exactly. Yeah. Little purple people. Eater. I mean, the poor babies <laughs> got taken away from his mom. Like. Yeah, well, the, she explained it. Adressa explained oh, it no. perfectly. It made it made absolute perfect sense, but that doesn't mean the baby understands what's going on. No, no, and it's well, it won't remember her probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the funny thing is, it made me think. All right, well, if he ages quickly on Thraxen, what happens if he goes to Earth? Will he age faster on Earth as he does on Thraxen, or is well, it just within his? DNA. I think they they made it seem like it was the DNA more than the planet. Okay, that's this isn't, that's, that's what I thought too. Yeah, this but, isn't like a Kal-El thing. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, and I'm curious to see what powers this kid has. Yeah, I'm really interested to see. You have to factor in he's Viltrumite. He might not have the Thraxen DNA to make him age quick. He might age normally for all. Well, and him. he's got to hit a certain age before the Viltrumite kicks in. Correct. So will that come faster? That might happen. So that that's something to look forward to, everybody. He becomes like- a baby Jack Jack from uh, <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> I miss that. They they only put out the sequel not too long ago, and uh, I did enjoy it. But, the shorts. My kids like the shorts, so we've watched the shorts a bunch of times on Disney Plus. Well, that's like me with Minions. I loved all the short movies that they had, and if you. You get the uh, if you get it on iTunes or on like uh, a Blu-ray or something like that, you get all the multiple amounts. And then I think on like YouTube, you could actually find them all. But we digressed again. Uh, yes. <laughs> but, so yeah, baby, the, the baby, we're looking forward to see him grow and see what powers he gets. Hopefully. And like you said, uh, I agree. Most likely he'd probably get those earlier for the fact that if he does age quick or maybe it does a reversal where he does age quick. A little quicker, but not as quick as they do in Thraxen. Yeah. And the fact that it might boost up within his DNA and Viltrumite DNA and the uh, Thraxen DNA, they might collide to the point where he might get those when he might age up to like age 10, probably in a few months' time. Which is nice for the plot. <laughs> Yeah, which would be great. And then he might get those and he'd be like, you know, the equivalent, like yeah, you were saying before, making <laughs> making a funny about it, about Kal-El uh, from Krypton. He might be like a super boy and yeah. he might be able to work with his brother. He might work with Mark at that point. Yeah, but I mean, he's I, not going to be like the other superheroes. He's not going to be able to be amongst the real people, though, because he is purple. Correct. Unless he uses a lot of makeup. <laughs> I mean, they make some good makeup, but. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. And that's why Cecil was trying to take him away. But I think that it all had to do with Nolan and the fact that he's still trying to control Mark as it is. Yeah. No, I don't. I still don't like Cecil is just trying to control Mark, control all of the supers as best he can. Mm. But yeah, there were some really great moments within it. Uh, Like I mentioned it before about Rex getting Adam Eve back. Yeah, and, and the way he talks her into coming back into the Guardians of the Globe. Oh my God, she, that that first scene with her was breaking my heart. Yeah, uh, the I have it in here. There was a cool song that is "Skipping Stones" by Olivia Wendell. It worked so well in the 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 opening scene when she's walking past her parents. She just go into her room after eating, yeah. and it was kind of like that somber look because literally the last time she tried to help she kind of destroyed a bunch of things and people got hurt and killed. So she feels like, cause she went out on her own that she uh, is responsible for that. And and it's part of growing up very much like what Mark is dealing with too. And Mark's starting to realize that too, from his own experience. And uh, it was a nice uh, moment when they reunite on the spaceship yeah. <laughs> and the fact it was amazing that she did come back because she saved everybody from right the- <laughs> yeah they need they wouldn't have made it without her yeah all because of uh the martians uh warship yeah. and just destroys it like it's nothing and then uh she saves them with the bubble 
and then they are able to get onto the warship itself. But they, the yeah. space team worked really well together. Yes, they did. They worked really well together. Unlike uh, in the very beginning, where they had to deal with uh, Omnipotus, that was played by a voice by Ross Marquand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it seemed to me within that fight itself with just Omnipotus, there were far more Guardians of the Globe than I ever thought. Because I'm like, wait, wait, wait what is that person? That's, I, what? what I feel like here? they keep adding. <laughs> Uh, did we get introduced to some of these people already? I'm trying to remember. I feel like some of them might be. Yeah, I'm watching. I'm like, wait, who's that? Who's that? Yeah, exactly. Like, wait, do we have do we have Star Trek red shirts? What's going on here? Yeah, exactly. But it, we didn't see anybody get killed. That fight kind of came and went, but it looked kind of cool. I wanted to see the whole thing. Yeah, they but. they do that sometimes. That's one thing that kind of bothers me with this show is they they'll do just like a quick flash of oh, this is what's going on elsewhere. I'm like, yeah, yeah, but I want more of that. Oh, I guess I'm not getting it. <laughs> meanwhile, the Legion of Doom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't even say meanwhile, the Legion of Doom. Like you just get this like cut scene and then it disappears again and you don't. <laughs> I really did enjoy the fight, though, on Earth while they oh. were in space. But oh we lose duplicate in the process. I, know, to the serp- I think it's it, the it Serpent was, Society. It was beautifully gory, though. Yeah, the, she can't duplicate while she's in Komodo Dragon's grasp. Yeah. And he was already banging and tearing apart all her duplicates, but it got to that point where he just smashes the last two. Like, she duplicates real quick and smashes them together, and that's oh, it. That was but, heartbreaking. And, uh, and it, which sucks, too, because of what, uh, what Rex says during the battle Hey, Kate, remember who dies first pays for pizza. <laughs> Dude, Rex and his fucking <laughs> Rex brought so much of this on himself. He did. Now, I, I uh, he, he he thought that they could, you know, get it. There won't I'll... be two battles going on at the same time. Like, yep. Why would you say that out loud? Yeah, it's exactly. like going into a hospital and saying it's quiet here tonight. Like, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and the Serpent Society still keep keep reminds me of Cobra from GI Joe all the time. I don't know <laughs> yes, why. Baby, I can because, see that. Oh, uh, but uh, the fact is, of also at Rex the way he was, uh, how he's preparing for it. He goes first rule: no rolling those eyes. Second rule: get ready, uh, because we are going to relax and chill out until those losers come back. And third rule: there is no third rule. <laughs> <laughs> I just love some of the quotes that he's able to put out. Uh, yeah. As you as you listeners could tell, I like to throw and sprinkle them in. We could do at the very end, and I'm sure James. Yeah, I've got, got a, a ton I've of, got a few. Yeah, um, uh, we already mentioned the one that I had from Debbie. It's like he left another planet ruins and had another child, and I'm still shrink- cleaning up after his mess. <laughs> yeah, but I mean the Earth battle, shrinking Ray going through that eyeball. Oh yes, yeah, was, I love the gore. I love the gore. <laughs> well, the, look, we've said it before. This is the equi- well, not really the equivalent of the boys, but it would be an animated version of the equivalent of the boys. But because they're working in cartoon, they can be more gory. Like they don't have to do all the effects, practical or special effects. Yeah, like it gets to be, you know, watching Komodo Dragon smash two people together and together. To, to do that practically or cg would cost a ton of money i know yeah so they get to do a whole lot of stuff that they can't do in live action yep that is Which, true the, but this would be the equivalent of the boys when it comes to uh the gore factor yeah they don't really do so much with the cursing as much but the gore it's so gory i love the gore well that uh, it's it and, and the animation is done really well and as you listeners will hear when you hear the Akira podcast, or if you haven't, when when uh, Lara and Rob and myself had covered uh, 1988's Akira, uh, that movie was very innovative with its uh, smoothing effects and animation within it for its time. But then again, it's Japanese animation. The animation for this is very good. It's held in high regard in the sense of it gives you that feel of Saturday morning, the way it's drawn, but there is smoothing within it that makes it very fluid. Yeah, with uh, that gives you that feel of uh, love Japanimation, as I call it. My friend Juanita would uh, say, <laughs> say because it's just animated and animation mark Jap 
Japan, Japanese animation. <laughs> and I just tend to call it Japan animation. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's really good in the sense. Uh, yeah. And when you were talking about live action, how they couldn't do it. I find it funny when Rob and I were covering Gen V. Uh, there was like one character within it that was kind of crazy. It was the brother of the lead who died. Uh, but he was losing his mind, but he would see when he would kill Jamie. It's funny. He, they were puppets. Oh, he sees him, uh, himself as a puppet, but doing all these super because he's super strong, ripping <laughs> people's heads off. And at the end, you see glitter, red glitter come out. <laughs> and it, uh, it was their way of saying, well, we don't have that much gore in the budget. So let's just make him Muppets because he's a little crazy. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he's a little bit adolescent. <laughs> But it worked, and it had that humor factor. But it, at the very end, you see the, the the result of it too. When you see a half carcass hanging from like a light fixture with the vertebrae sticking out, bleeding out, uh, it's like, <laughs> what did we miss? We want to see that. <laughs> but yeah, this is definitely the uh, the animated equivalent to the boys in that style. Um, the well, even up in space. The whatever that skin melding stuff is, I forgot what I'm sequids? blanking. What the sequids? The sequids, yeah. Okay. Like when they became a mass, like you could, they looked sticky and meaty and gross. It had a bit like, of realism, and you could yeah. feel it. That what it is, yeah. If they did that yeah. realistically, it would have been hard. It would definitely be more of like a John Carpenter's The Thing moment where they all melded together. Uh, that's and I found it uh, that was a good scene in the sense of Martian when he does explain everything, and they all knew that he was a Martian anyway. <laughs> and him fessing up, I thought that was pretty yeah. cool. But the fact is, is that the way he they're like, well, what happened? And we get a little quick backstory through the Martian of. Um, how he, when he left the sequids uh, can't go through their skin or penetrate their skin as martians but it can through he thought oh i thought my martian compatriots would pick him up and figure out before the sequids got to him and then next thing you know they became like a hive host to all yep. the sequids and they were taking over and they kind of revolted against the martians and that's where they're at and they want to come in and take over and they're the, i mean that's a scary group especially with how many of them there are yeah and they were treated like pets if you think about it yeah it's like uh well jerry will be upset if i can't remember the name but it was like a planet of the apes movie when you know the apes were yeah, killed as uh since dogs and cats were disappeared they used them as pets the apes so it's the same thing but they didn't really feel that they were going to get overrun by these well in this case they did yeah <laughs> But uh, not to reference that, but that's you can find that on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, everybody. <laughs> when we get to that, so got to get in touch with Jerry for that stuff. But yeah, I like, out. I like the sequins. I thought they were gross. They, and it, they, they look kind of like, of all things, they're going to mention it, like starfish and the starfish from the, the Suicide Squad. Yes. <laughs> not to be a little bit uh, too disgusting, but that, that's what they reminded me of uh yeah the, and i just love uh we we get a little bit more out of donald too that was a good yep. moment uh cecil winds up telling him about that he's a cyborg yeah uh, that he's a cyborg and and i love how he says it's like uh <laughs> cecil's like uh i he goes i thought i had uh he goes i have white room clearance he goes well you had some white room clearance <laughs> Now you got full comes in, but we see uh, what really happened after Nolan destroyed the house and Donald was in it. So he was killed. Technically, the only thing left of him was his brain. They were able to, uh, with the trauma, adjust that, I guess. Yeah. I just so, so scary, man. Yeah, he's very manipulative. We are, we knew this from the first season. It, it's like you want to trust him, you like the character, but there's something manipulative about him. He's very he keeps seemingly using his powers for good, but it's <laughs> still sketchy. It is sketchy, and I could see what he's doing with Mark. He's trying to be some sort of father figure to Mark. Well, since Nolan went 
crazy and destroyed the original Guardians of the Globe, including Immortal, but Immortal came back, unfortunately, because he is immortal. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it's it's wild. Uh, it's like he, he's trying to be that way, but um, understand Mark, but Mark is independent yeah. and he is a kid. And he still has the heart of a human, but the body of a Viltrumite. And he's still learning to adjust his powers and, and doing things for the right, which comes from his upbringing from Debbie, as we all know, because she wants him to do the right thing. And, you know, Nolan really didn't have much to do with his upbringing, in my opinion. A little bit, but not a little too bit. much. Uh, well, he, he pushed him for the powers. He was always yeah. testing him for the powers. He Correct. wasn't a great dad. Yeah. But he was Mark's dad. And you, no matter how shitty your parents are, mm. you long for your parents, no matter what. Yeah, regardless. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool, though. But uh, th the other sequences that I did enjoy were Mark's coming back. You know, it, uh, definitely with... We already spoke about it with his uh, talk with Debbie. Did you see the Easter egg of what Will was reading? Yes. <laughs> that cracked me up. Yes. You 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 could explain it. <laughs> so they may, I mean, you, there was no way to not read this, but Will was reading Total Consciousness, A, Phil a Philosophical Life by Carl Spackler, which is a Caddyshack reference. <laughs> That I was cracking up, like, oh my god! So who's, who's Will's got that, that going ori for originally in Caddyshack. That was Bill Murray, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Bill Murray's character. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Through, and they say, "Sure, got that going for me." <laughs> yeah. So, but also, um, let's talk about Will. I really did enjoy that. Uh, it's like I love how. Mark comes back and he finds out through Will that he's on academic probation because he's been <laughs> gone. So he was supposed to cover for me. He goes, I can only do so much. Right. <laughs> I, 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 there's that whole thing about the posters. Put your posters back. Put, <laughs> put posters them all back up. <laughs> yeah. But did you look at the posters in, in, uh, in the room with Will and Mark? No. Okay. One, he had a poster of Magnum PI. <laughs> that uh, fits. Yeah. Not Lady Gaga, but Lady Yaya. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lil Bass. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, like Lil Wayne. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it looked like a group photo, but the. It was like uh, uh, just three letters on it, but it, it reminds me of like a, another band. I can't remember which, but it, it's DTF. Because <laughs> 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 it's Will. <laughs> yeah. I love Will. He's still one of my favorites. Uh, they, he's not as funny as he used to be, but I still like no, season no. one. Will. Well, that's because, well, it was a reintroduction of him after he came yeah. back. So, and we, he hasn't gotten as much screen time as he got last season. Yeah, not, him and uh, even Amber didn't really get as much either. Nah. Yeah, and Amber being the most uh, understanding of girlfriends. Holy crap, yeah. I was waiting for him to sm her to smack him or to say we're done or she's moved on because it's been two months, but she understood completely and it was like, whoa. She's, she's amazing. And then she, on top of that, she had to deal with her grandfather dying yeah. while he was away. And I mean, the one thing you want when a family member dies is someone around you who might be new family. Yeah. It helps a lot. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it would have been great if Mark was there. But the fact that she understood that completely for him going to do what he had to do. And she was just starting to adjust with his powers because he he took her he he couldn't take her to france he only took her to oh what was it vegas i vegas. think <laughs> to the see you see the small version of the eiffel uh yeah the uh yeah the eiffel tower so i remember that from uh the 
first half. Well, he can take her to France. He just couldn't take her to France and back in lunchtime and keep her skin intact. Yeah, her skin <laughs> would just peel off her skeleton at that point. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to have at, Adam Eve or Eve just do a bubble around her and just fly them fast. Because <laughs> that'll work. <laughs> yeah, but they'll do dinner in because they were just doing lunch at that time. So if they do dinner, it'll be okay. I, I loved how Amber's friends reacted saying, oh, you do exist. <laughs> <laughs> and they understood and they gave them their alone time. And then that's when they had the whole conversation, which was really cool. Um, the one thing that we, we already spoke a little bit about Donald, but he, that whole interaction with his own, the other robot that he sees, apparently there's been several versions of it. But it's him dealing with it mentally with the robot because he had a dream of that robot choking him. I'm wondering if that comes into play later on as the season unfolds or finishes up because this is the last half. So I'm wondering if he has a psychotic break or the the robot changes yeah. at it's, that point. Uh, yeah. I, there's a lot that can go on there. Yeah. It, it's really interesting. Yeah. And then uh, we didn't get anything else after this because we, we finally got the ending with Alan, the alien yeah. and Thaddeus and everything, which is good. Overall, the, the episode, in my opinion, was done very well. Uh, I wouldn't say it was the greatest, best ever episode that we got so far. But to me, I was really enjoying it and I really do highly recommend it. Uh, a lot of people asked me about Invincible and they said, oh, I got to get into it. I said, they're like, when can I jump into it? I said, well, think about it at almost like a with a comic book. You never jump in at the very beginning when you re- when you start reading comics. Some people don't jump in at the very beginning because yeah. it's hard to because if you know who's going to have the first original Amazing Spider Man or first X Men comic or first Invincible comic because trust me to go all the way back that far and even finding a single issue, it's going to cost you a ton of money. <laughs> yes. Or you get the uh, trade paperback or the omnibus. And that thing is like, I don't know, good three to four inches thick. I noticed. And it costs okay. like over a hundred bucks. I only have one omnibus and it's such a pain to read. Which one? A saga. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, well, it's I so big and heavy. <laughs> Well, it's I have, so heavy. I have the first omnibus, and as we when when it comes back, when Sandman comes back, I have that one, and I'm like, "What is going on here? <laughs> this thing is huge!" But I also it's it's hardcover. Everybody, it's hardcover. They added extra artwork. Like that's gorgeous. That's a that's yeah. a showpiece. That it, it's a nice showpiece. Plus, with mine, I I, I lucked out and had getting a signed one from Neil Gaiman. Uh, well, I have some I have some signed Neil Gaiman things now, so I'm not yeah, that jealous. I'm not yeah, as jealous. Too. You're not as jealous, which is good. No. I uh, have um, what I have. I have um, an ABC book that he did signed now. Oh, okay. And I have um, American Gods signed. Uh, the trade or the actual book? The actual book. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I have the the trade, and he signed the book for me, and. I have uh, how to pick up girls at parties and the, the omnibus. I still have to get the second omnibus because <laughs> there's two of them, everybody. Yeah. But they're not cheap. I can tell you that. Yep. I looked, I went to the uh, Jane Silent Bob secret stash and I was hanging around and Mike was looking at me and he goes, Oh, you going to pick that up? I said, I can't afford it. It's out of my budget today. He goes, What's <laughs> the, Stop looking at it then. I said, oh, not- always look. I'm not reading it. It's in it's in cellophane. It's sealed, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I'm just like the reason debating. I have the <laughs> reason I have the saga one is because it got damaged. Like the back cover got damaged, and it was on discount. I think it was only like fifteen bucks for the omnibus. I was like done. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, that that's a no brainer right there yeah. because if you're all you want to do is just to read it. Yeah, it's the floppy one. It's not one of the hardcover oh, ones. Okay, it's like the yeah. old Walking Dead's that they used to have that were heavy, and you got like but two yeah, or three of them. Yeah, it's giant, but yeah, you, it's, yeah that's thick. It's yeah, like it's so when heavy. we say thick, everybody, we say like three to four inches thick. Yeah, of paper, and it's so heavy. I used to see people at uh, conventions. I think it was, uh, I, I yeah, it was Monster Mania and Cherry Hill, 
when they had the whole Walking Dead, uh, not the whole Walking Dead cast, but a lot of the Walking Dead cast. It was right around season three, and they had a bunch of the 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 actors there. But every every person I saw because they they were getting those omnibuses signed. Yeah, and I saw some of them with heavy cracks in them because you know people were still reading them. <laughs> and, and it's just, but to see that, and it's like, oh, well, at least it's a used one and they're actually using it and they're actually yep. reading it. But yeah, uh, I always highly recommend that. But like I said, they have one for Invincible as well. Uh, not just one. They have like two or three for Invincible. And Invincible has, I'm forgetting how many issues. Uh, it had to be 100. and It's got to be more than 100. About close to 300 issues i believe that would make yeah that makes more sense and <clears throat> you can also read these online like if you don't want all these big things taking up space there are digital versions of this it's not as much fun but yeah. for those who either don't have the space or the hand strength or whatever <laughs> there are usually digital versions available it used to be available on comiXology but amazon ate that up and now it's part of kindle i believe oh well, okay. Well, that answers that. I was going to say Comixology yeah. is another way to do it. but Yeah, because I was using Comixology for a long while, and then I had kids, and I fell off all comics. And I recently have started trying to get back into it, so I pulled up my Comixology account. And it's like, you can't add anything. Please go to Kindle. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> that is wild. Interesting. Well yeah, I was looking into it, and I guess there was some kind of update where they like messed everything up. Like everything I own, I still own. like everything I bought before, I still own it's still in my library, but I couldn't add new stuff to it. Hmm. Huh. All right. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I I'm not really an avid fan. I'm still a physical reader, and I try to get the trade paperbacks at least so that I'm not spending a crap ton on yeah. individual comics anymore. And uh, there's a few that I have because, uh, I I mentioned to you to your listeners that I I have a tendency of like looking online. There's certain places on Reddit and stuff where you can download PDF that people share. I have like a collection of Uncanny X Men from the very beginning all the way to like number like the original series like 200, and it's all on PDF. But that's a decently sized file, and if you're gonna put it on your iPad or uh samsung uh, galaxy tablet or something like that it takes a lot of space so keep that in mind if you you try to venture for that but there are communities like that where you could get those because they're older and they're harder to come by and they don't re resubmit them to like comiXology or anything like that they they only have the newer versions of comics that are out that are coming out digitally from the artists so uh that's a good way to do it and obviously uh they the artist gets still gets paid but if you do buy the trades, it actually pays the artist as well, too. So yeah. it keeps them, uh, you know, in a job, even though uh, it's hard nowadays for uh, comic artists and uh, writers because, uh, you know, with all physical media at this point starting to go away, it's very hard. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> and if you go to the cons, go support the artists. Yes. Go to their booths. Try to get something sign from them talk to them uh pick I up some a, artwork definitely pick up some artwork I, always, I have a stack of artwork behind me from my last con that i have to get framed and put up yeah i i plan to definitely go to terrific con this year and that and at terrific con they get a lot of artists for comics so and i think the last time i went to philly fan expo there was a, a couple of like Dan Slott was there and a whole bunch yeah, of people. That there were, I never there were some saw. really good ones. Some really good ones. So I got, I walked away with a couple of autographed comics. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I think when I, the last terrific con I went to, Oh no, no, not the last one. The one before the pandemic I, I went to, I got to meet Chris Claremont. Ooh. And I got to, in a conversation with him, he signed issue 100 of X-Men, uh, uncanny X-Men for me. Yeah. yeah that was the biggest, issue at the time way back when uh uh because it hit that number 100 mark but it was a used copy i think i obviously but it was i think it only cost me like five bucks but nice. he was more than willing to sign it but if i got it cgc graded unless somebody's there to actually vouch for it it doesn't yeah really yeah they, they'll just say it's just a scribble on the comic yeah, whatever Even though some people could decipher it and legally state hey 
this is really his autograph. Yeah, I get these autographs from me. They're all made out to me. I'm not worried about selling it later. That's my yeah. kid's problem when I pass away. <laughs> no, nah, with me, I do CGC grading uh, for ones that aren't signed. Like I have uh, Secret Wars issue number eight, which is the first Black Suit Spider-Man. Uh, I got The Dark Knight by uh, Miller. Uh, I should get my Watchmen because I bought them. Or all of them were original bought when they first came out. So, oh, wow. But uh, those were my original. I got them right off the rack. I was 12 years old when Secret Wars issue number eight came out. I was buying that right off the rack. And I remember when I bought it, I went back the next day to see if I could get another copy because I just loved it so much. They were out. The guy at the, com- well, it wasn't even a comic book store. It was like a baseball cards and comic book shop next to the arcade place. I used to go to in Great Kills in Staten Island. Miller's, uh, it was called. And uh, yeah, and the next thing you know, about a week later, he had it on the wall and it was he was charging like thirty dollars. Whoa, because it was such a sought after book at that point. And I was like, I ain't paying. I don't got that kind of money. I'm a little <laughs> kid. <laughs> uh, I, I have the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I have issues number two all the way up to thirty five. I, I got to get the uh, first magazine style ones that came out. I think the first four issues were like that and uh i have two to four and i want to get them cgc graded and they're really good condition i look um when i go to cons i laugh and i look at the price i'm like i could sell for that i'm not selling it anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> i just want it so i have the cover and i could actually display it right but uh if i wanted to read it i could easily buy the trade paperbacks that are out there and my my friend eric did that recently with uh tmnt and he's trying to get his kids involved in reading that so uh griffin and and his uh other son and his daughter are are reading all that stuff but he's more of a dc guy (laughs) (laughs) but we kind of uh walked away a little bit but we got into cool information for you people out there that are listening about comic books and comics and how to get in you know into invincible if you're interested uh i've said it before and jamie has said it before that we have not read the comic completely i tried i i've read maybe a few smatterings of the issues that i've had yeah that's about i've read the i think i read the first two on comiXology and i didn't like the artwork now the artwork changed later and it was a lot better i just yeah didn't get back into it yeah, it was um, very much like what, what what Robert Kirkman did with uh, <laughs> The Walking Dead. He started off with a different artist, and then he changed the artist halfway <laughs> towards the latter half of uh, Invincible. And I have yeah. the last 15 No, issues. Invincible, it changed pretty early on. It changed within the first 20. Well, so did uh, Walking Dead. Yeah. Tony, Tony was gone after like the first three or four issues, I think. Yeah. And then it was Adler after that. Uh, somebody actually said that Adler was doing a con recently. I forgot who. Oh, I'd love to meet him. Yeah, I, I would like to meet him as well. But uh, yeah, well, we'll see what happens. Just got to keep you, your eyes open out there, people. Convention season is among us again. Yay, <laughs> conventions. <clears throat> um, but uh, I, I guess that could be put under comic book news. But yes, that was uh, our comic book news. Uh, really. Did you have anything else about the show to talk about? Did we finish talking about the show? I think we covered it as much as we could. We I had about... one tiny comment. Sure. It ended on an old school like Batman 66 style cliffhanger. That is like, true. How are our heroes going to make it out of this? <laughs> like that's what it felt like as you saw the wave coming over. That is true. It felt so Batman 66 to me. Yeah, imagine they had this. Well, they could have somebody do the voice. Ross Marquand is a perfect mimic of it. Yeah. <laughs> so he could do that. <laughs> In the next episode of Invincible. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was just like that cliffhanger was just so. I was, sometimes I get mad at cliffhangers, but this one I was like, nope, this feels absolutely right. This feels like a good throwback. I like it. Well, think about the first half in uh, episode four. We, we, we were complaining back then it's like oh we only get four episodes and then they're gonna come back i think we have a total of what eight or ten episodes for this season i think it's eight i want to say it's eight eight sounds right so that's probably why they broke it up in first half second half so but 
if you look at uh, the first half on episode four, it ended on a cliffhanger too. Oh yeah, I'm, like so. I said, I'm not mad about it. No, I liked it. It's it's yeah, nice. only eight episodes. I just looked it up. Yeah. Uh, as far as anything else comic news related, which is pretty interesting, uh, Rob and I got into a whole discussion about Marvel, what's coming up with the MCU and stuff like that. The cool part is <clears throat> more and more is coming about Deadpool Wolverine. Henry Cavill is being cast and it's confirmed that he's in it. We don't know exactly what uh, speculation is, is that he's another variant of Wolverine. Which would be interesting. Interesting. So if they do get Affleck in there as his daredevil, or it doesn't even have to be as daredevil. He could even be Matt Murdock for all we know. And just didn't have another version of him and then Deadpool killing him or something. I don't know. But if they had Cavill and, and Affleck in the same scene, it would be funny. Because then you got Batman and Superman in a freaking Marvel film <laughs> together. Batfleck and Cavill. That would be fun. Uh, there's also, uh, we already know, and it's confirmed that there's a character of patch in the, in the movie itself. And I'm speculating and I'm thinking like more, and a lot of people are trying to be more pushing it, that it's, uh, Daniel Radcliffe, uh, Radcliffe as patch, mm-hmm. which is Wolverine. It's, uh, Harry Wolver- Potter. Yep, Harry Potter. But if you looked at, uh, Danny Radcliffe, when he worked out for one movie, he, was ripped well and that play he was doing on broadway yes he was really ripped for it it's escaping me it's about a horse yeah i remember when it came out yeah and but he I, was ripped for that too and a lot of women will enjoy that because he showed his uh wand on stage yes uh, i did not go see that <laughs> but uh yeah but i think he'd be perfect for it and i he's the perfect height and size and I could see him with the hair and everything. And he, he's outgrown that whole Harry Potter c- kid thing. So, you know, I, I, he's more in line for adult roles. Look at uh, Swiss Army Man. Look at uh, oh, Horns was another Horns one. Horns was so good. That was an interesting one. Uh, I love that book. And the movie was really good, too. No, that's something nobody's seen. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> You've well, seen it. <laughs> you and I watch weird things. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> but if uh, actually, uh, you could probably find it on Tubi. And I think I was in a client's house when after I finished up their TV, uh, we were waiting for them to come back and sign something. Me and my buddy Steve were sitting there and he goes, what are we going to do? I guess we sit here and watch TV and wait for them to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so we were watching it. I, I forgot where it was. It was on something that was free available through their apps. And I was like, and uh, Husband walks in, he goes, what are you watching? <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry. He goes, no, I don't mind horror movies, but what is this? I said, it's called Horns. And he goes, oh, okay. Yeah, if you haven't seen Horns, I, I recommend it. I recommend reading the book more, but. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an interesting take. I don't, I didn't know anything about the actual book itself, but I, I did enjoy the movie. The book is uh, Joe Hill, Stephen King's son. Oh, okay. Is it a comic or is it a regular book? It's a regular book. It's okay. a novel. All right. So, yeah, check that out. Another recommendation for you people. Yep. But uh, like I was saying, uh, Radcliffe as uh, Patch, and it's literally Wolverine in Madripoor, which everybody, if you've been following it, we did cover uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, and we did get a glimpse of Madripoor in there. So we know it is Madripoor because based on uh, the signs and the bar that's there, that is the character of Patch. And uh, he's not really Wolverine. He doesn't act out. He he's not. He's literally like a like a money hustler, or kind of like a mobster in Madripoor. So that that's what that particular character is. So uh, I, I have a funny feeling they wind up killing him too, because <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> obviously this is a Deadpool movie more than anything than a Wolverine yeah. Deadpool. But he, he, the the take is is that he kills the Marvel universe it's like that was also another comic run that was out there everybody so you could check that out but um and if you're uh definitely a movie goer something i happened upon uh was i was looking to get the marvel's popcorn holder and they have these at amc theaters so they have limited edition ones especially with the new dune one that's out there yeah, everybody knows about that one. Everybody knows about that one. The but. last con I was at, uh, the costume contest, the sexiest person was the Dune popcorn holder. Really? 
Yes. <laughs> That's funny. It was hysterical. I like I turned around at one point and I was like, oh my God, you're amazing. <laughs> like I saw him walk in the con floor. It's like, that's the best costume I've ever seen. That's hysterical. Well, at least it's not the one that I saw at Monster Mania one year when a person was walking around. I'm like, why are they walking around with a half a horse? And they were reenacting the never ending story with the horses. Oh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> In the swamp. And it loses some. <laughs> what is it, Atreyu? I think. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh. No. I was never. Sh- I I watched that movie last year. I'm like maybe I should let my kids watch. Nope, my kids are never watching this. There is way too much trauma in this movie. Well, I'm surprised because it is a PG film, but it, it has a lot of trauma in it. And it could cause trauma. <sighs> we were allowed to watch things when we were kids that kids today are not allowed to watch. No, <laughs> yeah, well, even look at Labyrinth. The the baby gets my stolen. My kids are not watching that either. <laughs> Especially not when until those, they're twelve, at least. Well, especially when you got Muppets taking their heads off and bouncing yeah, them around. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. I keep watching. St- I forgot. I went to show them Land Before Time. Well, my yeah. daughter, my son was too young at the time. I forgot the mom dies in the beginning. Well, then don't want, let him watch Bambi either. <laughs> I remember Bambi. I forgot in the Land Before. I just remember Ducky and like this big adventure. And I put the movie. We didn't make it past that scene. She started hysterically crying. I couldn't calm her down. We can't watch Land Before Time now. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the kid who loves Freddy Krueger. <laughs> oh, she loves she loves real life horror. <sighs> but TV horror is a different thing. Well, she likes Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice we watch. Well, then she'll uh, love when Beetlejuice 2 comes out. <laughs> She's counting down. <laughs> anyway, back to Task back at to, Hand. Well, well, we already did comic news. We kind of uh, like digress as we usually do. And we like to have fun with that. But that also makes for fun conversation <laughs> out there, everybody. Uh, I got a one podcast recommendation. That would be through Podcastica. And that would be uh, the Buffy First podcast, Still Slaying. Uh, I was a guest host on there twice so far. So I've been, I've been doing at least one season at a time, <laughs> which is funny. So uh, Steve was on there not uh, not too long after I was, which is pretty cool, before he went away for vacation and go to New Zealand and meet on one. And uh, uh, it, I, I highly recommend it. If you're into uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, check it out. Uh, the first part of the podcast, once you start it, you're going to be like, where, where did season one go? Well, they didn't cover season one. They did uh, highlights with of season two. I did the Halloween episode because I prefer that one. And uh, the for the third season, which they're doing completely now, which is great, uh, I covered Homecoming, which I really did enjoy is because it reminded me, and that's where the impetus of uh, Cabin in the Woods came from. Ah. So that was that episode. That's where uh, JW, who uh, we'll just call him JW because my uh, respect for him went out the door once uh, all the accusations and uh, apparently factual information about what he did to people on set uh, came to light. Uh, I could still enjoy the material that was out there that he did cover because obviously Marvel he did Dollhouse. He did Firefly. So well, I'm just not going to watch this stuff anymore. I, I love it. I still do. But I just don't want to have to see him. <laughs> so, yeah. I but, mean, I can't totally take Firefly out of my life. No. Nah. Especially with Nathan Fillion and Nathan Alan Fillion, Tudyk. Alan Tudyk. <laughs> and if you're not watching Resident Alien, you are missing out. Oh, I have to catch up with that. Oh, man. Oh. It's the funniest show on television, hands down. Oh, he's no one character in it. <laughs> I, there's no one else in the world who could do it other than Alan Tudyk. Like he's yeah. absolutely amazing. You need to be watching Resident Alien. Um, and on Freevee, if you want, this was an Alan Tudyk and Nathan Fillion project that they did a while ago. It's on Freevee, which is Amazon. Which honestly, same thing with Invincible, but unfortunately, with uh, Amazon now, you're still getting ads. You're getting yeah, ads now. I I was didn't know what happened all of a sudden i'm watching i'm like why am i watching it because ad? for 14 more dollars a month yeah, they get enough of my money yeah exactly so mr bezos has enough of my money yeah but freebie is the same thing freebie is what started it but that's through amazon 
So I'm okay with it. I'm like, all right, I get an ad, what, every 20 minutes for a two-hour movie or something like that. So to me, I don't mind it as much. I also use Tubi, which does the same thing. And uh, uh, Cinemascape, I think, is another one. But I'm also it, old and remember when there were a lot of commercials and that's when you get up to pee, so it's okay. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, you could probably find it there. But uh, Con Man is the the name of the uh, and it's a bunch of shorts. Obviously, everybody, it's like they're maybe like 10, 15 minutes long per episode, but they have two seasons full. And it's pretty funny because it's like literally think of Tudyk playing himself, but going to conventions, but he's still trying to get a major part in a major film. One of them is like a Clint Eastwood film. too, (laughs) And uh and Nathan Fillion plays the same, like as if it was him, but a different character of a different. Oh, that's name. fun. But and the worst version of himself <laughs> that he could be, so he's full of himself. Uh, Henry Rollins is in it. A whole bunch of like any convention goer that goes to cons will see some people in it and go, "Oh my god, it's a who's who of actors and stars and stuff that you uh, get to enjoy watching." But it's funny as hell to watch because uh they hold they don't hold anything back but uh it's the like this misadventures of this particular uh actor and stuff that's awesome so i would i highly recommend that you can feel like i said you can find it on freebie which is part of amazon so a little plug there for that um i don't really have anything for youtube but uh yeah well, we'll go into and where you could find us. So, Jamie, you've been on a bunch of stuff, including here. But uh, where else can people hear you? Um, you I mean, you want to listen to I'm not scheduled for anything new, but you want to listen to some old stuff. You can find me on. Um, well, if you like Mark and I, we, <laughs> did, we did the Sandman cast. Yes. Um, that's come back next year, I think. It is. Um, Actually, then... within this year, I think. It went back into production, so it we'll went back out. into production. But yeah, um, Wilhelm that we talked about before about a few about the Halloween episodes, um, and then watched it in the eighties. I'm on a few episodes, Friday the Thirteenth, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and Adrenaline Cinema, and Adrenaline well. Cinema. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, you should listen to the Goonies one. Yeah. That's one of my favorites that I've ever done. <laughs> yep, we did that one. That was fun to do. The uh, if you want to get in, uh, get to listen to uh, Sandman cast, all you have to go to is podca- podcastica.com. So, uh, while you're there, check out go to podcastica.com, check out Sandman cast, check out all the other podcasts that they do. They, they have a lot of them going on at the same time right now, <laughs> so yeah. uh, so you have a lot to choose from. So, I'm waiting, they're, I'm waiting they're for Extraordinary Cast to get released because that's another show nobody's watching that should be watching. <laughs> They are releasing it, I thought. Oh, I maybe my my app gets weird, so maybe I got to go in and find it. I know it. Greg and Penny have been recording it, so I still have to get back into Extraordinary. Oh, my God. It's so funny. I know. I, I know. It's so funny. I've Not been, as good as Resident Alien, but oh, yeah, pretty close. <laughs> pretty close, but also I've been watching like other things. By the way, listeners, I, I, I love Apple TV, but I had gotten a few things, and they, they have bundle sale so if you're into sci-fi and comedy me i got parks and rec and uh brooklyn 99 for like 25 dollars each for the series and the same thing with battlestar galactica as well the series uh that's the newer series not the 70s <laughs> so uh check that out too uh they have some cool uh stuff there not to plug apple but uh you could hear me right here on pounds to pixels podcast as always uh adrenaline cinema podcast my other podcast as you all know uh we should be coming back with that we've been taking a hiatus i took a long hiatus of like over two and a half months after i finished monarch with ben beck which was a wilhelm podcast uh uh podcast for uh monarch uh, legacy of beasts so i was there the co-host with uh, ben back on that uh you could hear me there as well and that's on podcastica.com um you could hear me on fantasy picks movie edition uh right now they're taking a little bit of a longer break because rob's looking to buy a house so Ooh. he's got a lot of stuff going on but you could hear him on the akira 
episode of uh, Panels to Pixels podcast. So check that out with, with him and Lyra and myself. And we digressed a lot there too. We kind of talked about the crow that's coming out and our thoughts about that because Lyra and I had covered it. Mm. So if you want to have, take a good listen to that of a lot of rambling. If there wasn't an original, the new one looks good, but there was an original. There's no need for the new one. That's my personal take. <laughs> yep. That's, I think that's what Lyra and Rob and I both all said <laughs> at the same time, but we will most likely be covering that movie as well i if lara's interested and if not somebody else come on (laughs) she'll probably be like i didn't like it i don't want to cover it or something but we'll find out uh we are coming back with adrenaline cinema podcast to do uh interview with vampire when that comes out in may so the when the second season comes out we're going to do that episodically uh before then we will be doing uh the actual movie interview with the vampire that came out in the 90s so you can hear danny Lara, Rima, and myself on that and covering that movie. Well, Rima's going to do it too? Yeah. That's exciting. So, uh, uh, and then Rima might actually come on for the actual uh, season as well on occasion. Uh, new news that's out there uh, that we've covered here before is uh, Snowpiercer. It's coming back next year and it's going to be on Ooh. AMC+. Plus. So the final season that they filmed that they, they did not release on TNT AMC bought it out and they're going to release it in the beginning of two, uh, 2025. So look forward to us covering that when that comes out, whether it be Kat, Steve, myself. I'm not sure about Daphne. Daphne's on multiple amounts of podcasts lately on Podcastica. So <laughs> she she's more than welcome to come back. So I'm just waiting to hear of what people want to do. Uh Trying to get Steve back on. So Steve and I are definitely going to be doing Echo. Steve is traveling the world right now. Yeah, he's traveling. But when he does get back, we mentioned about doing Echo. Echo's been far and gone from Disney Plus. uh, And people have already covered it. But we will talk about the whole series as a discussion. And then what we liked about it, how it fits in with the MCU, uh, the future of the MCU especially with that particular character comparisons of it with something else that I saw on what if, and speaking of what if, uh, I actually, we started to cover it and then we kind of stopped because nobody was really coming on. Uh, I would probably do a wrap up of the overall season. I couldn't keep up. And when it came out every day during the holiday season, when it's a heavy workload of what I do is, uh, you know, retail, home theater installation that I do. I'm not saying where exactly I I work, but (laughs) it it, it gets very hard to uh, maneuver and schedule and navigate within that as well as edit. I have a few of those episodes uh, to upload. Uh, Rob and I covered losers, so that would be available both on Adrenaline Cinema podcast and here as well. It's going to be, I'm just going to double release it because it's got Jeffrey D. Morgan, Chris Evans, uh, Zoe Saldana, uh, it's got a whole slew cast, so we had a great time and enjoyed covering that when that came out. So uh, when that comes out, check for that. But uh, other than that, uh, that was our show, but I want to let you know about our feedback. So we, I haven't been really updating, but you can find us on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice. So uh, if there's a rating or review, which there usually is for Spotify and Apple Podcasts, be highly, you know, it would be highly appreciated if you could actually give us five stars and actually typing in uh, a little bit of a review. Uh, Word of mouth is great, too, to tell somebody and have us be noticed a little bit more. So get more people involved in listening to us. Uh, You could go to PirateCoreEntertainment.com. Uh, eventually I'll have a link for panels to pixels podcast on there. I didn't update the, uh, the website, so I'm going to just try to keep links together. So that way everything is consolidated with empire core entertainment, uh, for you to submit any theories and feedback. All you have to do is go to our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. Uh, you could, uh, just comment on the images below. I put a bunch of them there. So for whatever we're covering do so same thing with adrenaline cinema podcast uh you can email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com panels is spelled out panels two is spelled out to pixels and the number one at gmail you could just type out a regular texted email 
and we'll read it on the podcast. Or if you want to be part of the podcast in any way, shape or form, that would be just recording your voice and sending it as an attachment through the email. And then I could play it here and you'll be part of the podcast and we'll uh, talk about your feedback while it's happening. Maybe uh, keep us on track a little more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to stop us from rambling? Give us something else. to <laughs> or, Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, we can be found on YouTube. All you have to do is search for panels to pixels podcast. And we ask that you do subscribe, give a like and r- ring that bell to be notified whenever an episode is up. We have some interviews that are up there from the guys from comic book men. Uh, Good ones. Ch- ch- check that out. You could probably see my uh, panel with Tony Moore, but it's also another way for people to listen to the podcast as well. So uh, follow that. Uh, don't put in just panels to pixels because you'll find Josh. And I know he's prettier than I am and he's got the nice <laughs> hair and the British accent. But I love what Josh does. But his is a little bit of different type of uh, YouTube and podcast style. So uh, I'm not saying don't listen to him. But if you're looking for us, you're not going to find us. Exactly. <laughs> so do all that. So uh, with that, uh, I, uh, that was our coverage of Invincible Season 2, Episode 5. And I just want to thank everyone for listening. Thank I'm you. Mark. I'm Jamie. And this was Panels and Pictures Podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Goodbye. Bye.